Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and another experiment in the new game where today we're going to see what would happen if a perfect player existed in the game. So this perfect player is going to be a striker because I think it's most fun to do this with a striker uh, because they get a huge amount of goals um, and they can break a huge amount of records by scoring those goals and driving a team towards trophies and titles. A defender might help keep clean sheets, but if you've got a crap attack, it's not going to do anything to help that player win titles. So by making him a striker, he has the most impact on the game uh, and is more likely to pick up more and more trophies. So as you can see on the screen, this striker is called Jen Caldo Jr. He is, of course, my son in the game. And I started him out at Blythe Spartans, which is a team that I do use quite a bit for different experiments. I thought it's a nice one for him to go to. Of course, Blythe, not too far away from Newcastle as well. Uh, so good to see a team in the region doing reasonably well. Uh, but what we've done to make him the perfect player is we've uh, given him perfect 20s across the board in his technical, mental and physical stats. So if you're wondering how to do this, you need to buy the in-game editor on Steam or another platform as uh, DLC. Uh, and then you can just start editing a player. You click start editing button and there you go. You're ready to go. You can change his contract, his age, everything about him. Uh, Gencaldo Jr. does not really have a history. This is his first season as a player, which is nice and clean. Uh, and if we look at his attribute details, you can see current ability, potential ability, racked up to the maximum of 200. Uh, you can't go any higher than that. I've not messed with his reputation. He can build that on his own. But his kind of hidden stats here of adaptability, ambition, professionalism, um, consistency, all of that racked up to 20. Some of them not so, so his loyalty is set at 1 in the hope that he might take transfer opportunities when they come. Uh, 10 on controversy because we want him around the middle. Injury proneness is set to 1. Uh, if you set it to 20, he's never going to play a match. I've also racked his higher up. He's 6 foot summer, 95 kilos, but a strength on him. Um, and he is an out and out striker. I'm not going to allow teams to move him out to the flanks. I've given him a few little traits. So he likes to try tricks, get the crowd going, first time shots, uh, places shots, shoots from distance, uh, gets into the opposition area, gets forward wherever possible. I've given him uh, the traits that I think are most likely to him getting goals. Uh, and we started him out down in non league because it allows us to see what a player like this would do in non-league football. Now he is 14 years old. Uh, unfortunately he is at the peak of his powers and will always be at the peak of his powers because I've frozen his attributes. So it's not like he's going to get any better. This is just the greatest player of all time playing for Blythe Spartans down in the Vanarama North. I imagine he won't be here for long. Uh, they tend to get snapped up either in the January window or in the uh, end of the first season window and move to a bigger team uh, but what I have done to try and counter that uh, is say that you leave at the end of his contract it can sometimes be a little trick uh, to stop him being bought in a transfer I've given him a contract extension after promotion uh, I've also given him all these uh, contract extensions as well a billion pound release clause which should put any teams off trying to snap him up but I think because he's on a youth contract uh, there are lots of workarounds for how you can take a player like this away from the team. So we'll have to see if he stays at Blythe or if he goes off to one of the big teams. If he does go to one of the big teams, I'll only let him stay for five years before I terminate his contract and he has to find somewhere else. It should add a little bit of variety into the game and his achievements. But if you're looking forward to this experiment, do drop a like down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. Only one in eight people are subscribed to the channel who watch these videos, so it'd be great if you could help the channel grow by hitting that down there. But let's go ahead now and see how Jane Caldo Jr. does in its first season as a footballer in non-league football. So we'll start off by going through Jane Caldo Jr.'s first season as a footballer at Blythe Spartans. Obviously, we'll run through this series quicker and quicker, but you can see in his very first game against Kidsgrove, he scored in the 68th minute. Um, he then continued that against Pickering, against uh, Blackpool, he got his first hat-trick. And then finally, he gets his first experience of not winning a game against Sterling, but he scored in all four of the preseason friendlies, and then in his first professional game uh, against Daventry, uh, he did manage to win 3-0 with two goals in that game. He then set off on an excellent uh, run. His first league game, he gets a hat-trick. Uh, the very next one, two more. Um, and he wins 5-0 against Hyde, scoring four goals in that game. So it's a pretty blistering start to his uh, time at Blythe Spartans. 
a little bit of a dry spell here where he didn't score, uh, but then starts coming back, helps him into the FA Cup first round, uh, or pass the first round, scoring against Boreham Wood. Plenty of goals trickling in as the team does well. First defeat is against Boston United, but against Crewe they win 2-1. That's a massive upset. He didn't score in that game, but gets them through. Out in the uh, FA Trophy to nearby team Gateshead. Two will draw with Alfreton as well, but the league form's holding up pretty nicely. And then in the FA Cup for third round, a 2-0 defeat, he wasn't able to score in that match. But you can see... He does keep popping up with the goals in game after game after game. This is quite a long scoring run he's on here. He's still popping them in and finally it ends against AFC Telford. Uh, but he immediately picks up once more. So this is a pretty good uh, run of results. And he's scoring an awful lot of goals as well. So um, I can only assume with this many wins and no playoffs that uh, in the Vanarama North, Blythe did win. And you can see already there... They are the title holders. So they end up finishing top of the league by 14 points. Uh, 88 goals scored in that campaign. Uh, 43 conceded, which is higher than any team except for fourth, fifth there. So um, it shows that the goals being scored massively ahead of everybody else. And that's because they've got the best striker in the world at the club. But 30 wins gives them the title and they do manage to make it through. But if we go and have a look at... Uh, Jen Caldo Jr. himself, you'll see he has moved to Chelsea. Now, he's only 15 years old, and he's just moved to Chelsea on a youth contract. That was what I said before about um, they, there are lots of workarounds in the youth contract system that are out of the control of the in-game editor, and it has meant that he's moved to Chelsea. But if we look at his career stats here, you can see that while he was at Blythe, 38 in 38 in the league, a perfect scoring record, but 21 assists as well which takes him up to 59 goal contributions in 38 games. He only played in four matches where he didn't get the man of the match at a 9.03 rating, 45 in 45 overall, just dropping below that nine average rating there. But player of the match in 39 of his 45 games as a player, that's a pretty phenomenal record, and that is an absolute steal. To get him for 21K, potentially going up to 32 and a half, uh, that's a little bit less than the £1 billion um, one billion pound release clause that we put in, but you can see he is also playing for the England under 21s, which is nice. Uh, he won the European Championship Golden Boot uh, for the under 21s, the Championship Best Player, uh, Vanarama National League Player of the Season or National League North Player of the Season, and the Top Goal Scorer Award as well. 38 goals, some way ahead of the 15 goals scored by Kane Ritchie Hosler. Uh, but if we just have a look at this European Under 21 Championship. Uh, and the under-21s themselves. We can have a quick look at the schedule here. Uh, you'll see they lost their first game to Kosovo. Okay, I think we need to go back a year, do we? Uh, no, it's because we're with England, that's why. How do we get to the under-21s? England, under-21s, there we go. Under-21 schedule. So in the in the under-21 championship, 3-0, two goals in that game, two goals in the next game. Uh, didn't score in the third match, but against Croatia, a 3 all draw. Mason Greenwood getting the hat-trick. He did score in that penalty shootout against Germany. A 3-2 victory. Didn't score in that game, but was playing. And then in the final against France, he opened the scoring. Marcus Edwards also scoring for England uh, as they managed to get the victory. So if we have a quick look at this European Under-21 Championship, he was the top goal scorer, the best player by uh, a little bit of a distance there against Antonio Marin. Um, and also top of the assist charts as well, player of the match charts. Uh, he had a pretty good time of it, it's fair to say. And if we just have a look at that profile, you can see he scored six times in nine games for the England under-21. So won't be long before he is playing for England officially. And as a 15-year-old, this is pretty impressive stuff. But what we'll do is we'll go for probably a couple of years now uh, and we'll finish up with it going another two years ahead. So we'll have done five in total. But let's see how he does in the big leagues playing for Chelsea uh, who could definitely do with a striker of his quality up there, I think. Uh, let's see how he does in his first season in the Premier League. So we'll start out again with the uh, Chelsea club schedule, and you can see he scored four goals in his first game against Gombak and United. Uh, the goals kept flowing in against everybody that Chelsea played. In the Community Shield, he made his debut against Manchester City and scored a hat-trick at Wembley. That's quite a way 
to announce yourself to the big leagues with that hat trick to win a piece of silverware. In the Premier League, he didn't score in the first game, but he scored away from home against Spurs in a 3 1 victory. And that set Chelsea up for a good start to the season with him scoring quite a few goals. His Champions League debut, of course, he gets a goal as well. Carabao Cup debut, he gets a goal in a 5 1 win. Um, and then against Partizan, no goal from there. Um, Manchester City, a one or draw there, but generally they're doing well. They're getting through the, the various competitions reasonably easily. It took penalties, which he scored in to get past Brighton. 3-0 win away from home against Arsenal. Uh, Two-all draw against Liverpool. We just focus on the cup competitions here. You can see a 5-1 win over Sheffield United as well. Didn't score in that one. Uh, but doing well in the various competitions. Cruising past Norwich in the FA Cup. And Preston of all teams, in the Carabao Cup semi-final when they win 7-0 on aggregate. Uh, in that Carabao Cup final, 2-1 victory over Manchester United. He did play in this game a 9.3 rating despite not scoring, showing how instrumental a player he is to the club and a 4-3 win there. They lost 3-2 um, to Bayern Munich, but the away goals taking them through, 2-1 at home there, uh, he did score in that match. So they managed to just squeak through. 3-1 over City in the FA Cup as well. With a goal there and pass Lazio relatively easily in the quarterfinals. 3-0 over Manchester United in the Champions League as well. Didn't score there. Uh, and then in the return game, a 2-1 defeat, but easily getting through. And then in the Champions League final, unfortunately, they lost on penalties. Uh, he played in the game only a 7.7 .7 this time, but missed a penalty in the shootout, which meant that they ended up losing, I think, 5-4-2 on penalties. Um... A real shame there that he wasn't able to win the Champions League in his first season. But if we just have a look at the table for that season, you'll see he was a Premier League winner. But look at that. Four teams level on points at the top. Level on goal difference even with Manchester City. They would have got this, I presume, because they scored more goals. Because they didn't win as many games. And I thought it was games won that came next after level goal difference. But apparently it's goals scored. Unless it's a head-to-head. -head. Because they did beat City home and away, I think. Um, but I, I can't remember last time I saw four teams finish level on points at the top of the Premier League. His goals were absolutely crucial that season. Uh, the following season, I will sort these by competition, actually, because it makes it a little bit easier to see what happens. Uh, you can see that in the Carabao Cup, they did make it to another final, beating Liverpool 3-1, beating Arsenal 4-0, but losing in the final despite his penalty. Another piece of silverware gone. In the Champions League, they managed to get through all of their games reasonably comfortably, um, including the knockout stages. I'm not sure why it's split it like this across the two legs, but unfortunately, in the final, a 2-1 defeat to Manchester United. So Chelsea have lost two Champions League finals in a row. He did score in the match, but it wasn't enough as Mason Greenwood's 76th minute goal levelled it out and 99th minute goal won it for them. But they did manage to win... The uh, Club World Championship, which is nice. He managed to score a penalty in the game and also in the penalty shootout. So that's a piece of silverware. But out of the FA Cup and a lost Community Shield. Their league campaign not as successful uh, as the season before. And they did miss out on the title to Manchester City. Chelsea finishing in third. Uh, nine points off the top. But they scored 99 goals, which was the highest in the league by some distance um, and if we look at Giancaldo Jr you will see that he is of course still at Chelsea now 17 years old valued at 80 million and on 350 grand a week all of his stats holding up nicely uh, 32 in 38 but 50 in 65 in his first season as a Premier League player the next season just 46 this time uh, only 22 goals in the league that's a significant drop from what he had the previous year 10 less goals in the league uh, but scoring a lot of goals in other competitions and helping Chelsea get to the last stages of most competitions. So let's go forward another couple of years and check in on how he's doing. So we'll run through again this uh, senior squad schedule. You can see they're doing extremely well. Uh, a couple of defeats here to United and Everton, but otherwise they're just winning absolutely every match. Um, massive unbeaten run here as well, which takes them all the way to the knockout stage of the Champions League. They also win the Carabao Cup. 3-2. Two, two, three goals in the first three minutes of that final. That would have been amazing. Imagine if you turn up just five minutes late. You're 2-1 at that point. But he did score 
in that final as he wins another uh, trophy. Out of the FA Cup to Fulham, of all teams, uh, he was playing in that game as well, and unfortunately knocked out of the Champions League at the quarterfinals by this 2-0 defeat to Real Madrid, and then a 3-1 uh, defeat as well. They weren't able to get the fourth goal they needed to get through, despite him scoring in that game. Premier League campaign, though, went very well. We'll check in on that table in a minute. But the following season, they take the penalty shootout to beat Manchester United, uh, and then going through... The various competitions here, another really good unbeaten run. Carabao Cups against Man City, they get through 2-0 uh, in that second leg, but out of the FA Cup to Wolves, 2-1. Uh, Carabao Cup final, a 3-0 victory over Liverpool, him scoring the first goal as well. Bit of silverware there for Chelsea. They beat PSG as well over two legs. He scores uh, both goals in Paris to take them through to the semi-finals, but a 4-0 thrashing by Manchester United followed up by a one-all draw means that they're not able to make it into the final. They do get into the Club World Championship again though, uh, but lose 2-0 in the final this time to Man City. So it's not been the best of t times for them uh, in some of those competitions. But if we have a quick look at the Premier League, you can see that that following season we left off, he got his second Premier League title, 11 points clear of Liverpool. But the following year, they finish eight points off the top with 90 in total. Huge points totals being uh, posted by the big teams here. It's not just one team getting to 100 points. There's quite a lot of it going on. Uh, and he is doing pretty well for them. If we go and have a quick look, you can see he's now valued 90 million, 500 grand a week, only 19 years old, and 47 goals for England in 44 games. But let's just have a quick look at these career stats first because when we left off last time, we had seen him get that 50 goal mark uh, in all competitions uh, and then 46, 44 the season after that, 30 in the league uh, and then 48 and 59, 28 in the league. He's not quite reaching the Callum Wilson levels uh, that we've seen in my Newcastle series but he is doing extremely well with a lot of goal. But if we have a look at his time at England, starting with his profile here, you can see he's got 47 goals in 44 games for England at 19 years old if we have a look at this England camp here you can see he's already the vice captain and he's of course the key player as well definitely their top player for the uh, national squad we're going to have a quick look through the schedule here he made his debut during the 2022 season here against Northern Ireland a 3-0 victory in a friendly and against Chile he scored his first England goal so first appearance Northern Ireland first goal against Chile 29th minute as they won that match 3-2 it turned out to be the winning goal as well taking it from 2-2 2-3-2 for England against Ireland another goal there as they made their way through the European League Division Group A against Austria a 3-1 defeat would have been a surprise that one but followed up with a 5-0 win against Holland, 2-1 against Ireland. He hasn't actually scored very much here, so I can only imagine he scores a huge number of goals later on, or he's not playing in these matches against a round of 3-0 win. And then in the World Cup, a 6-0 victory. He scored four goals in the opening game against host Qatar, 2-0 against Canada, scoring in that match, and then 3-0 against Norway, 1-0 against Czech Republic, 4-2 in the quarterfinal against France. He scored twice in that match, including in extra time, and then in the semi-final, England with 10 men for most of the second half before Brazil levelled it up, but he scored the winning goal in the 109th minute to take England to their first World Cup final since 1966. And against Spain, they were beaten on penalties. Again, another man sent off for England. Unfortunately, he missed in the penalty shootout. Uh, not ideal that. Had he scored, England probably would have won the World Cup. And he really should be scoring the kind of player he is. But then going into the European Championship qualifiers, he's obviously getting a huge number of goals for England at this point. They're flowing in, uh, although they actually weren't then. And then 15-0 against Liechtenstein. He scored five goals in that game. 4-0, uh, 3-1, 3-0. And then into the most recent campaigns in the European Championship. A 1-0 win over Portugal. He scored twice against Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, a hat-trick against Spain in the uh, group stages is massive. And then against Poland, 2-0, 5-2 against Belgium in the quarterfinals. Another hat-trick for him there. 1-0 uh, against Holland in the semifinals. And in the final, he scores both goals as England win their first major European, first ever European championship, but first international major trophy since the 1966 World Cup. 
uh, a major accomplishment there as he gets both goals in that final. And then in the European League, again, scoring goals throughout all of these matches, taking us through to the semi-finals with a 3-0 win over France and then in the final a 2-0 victory. He scores the opening goal there as well. Uh, so another piece of international silverware and a World Cup to come as well. So it's fair to say he's had a pretty good time as a player at just 19 years old. If we just have a quick look at that biography, you'll see everything that he's accomplished already. 11 competition victories, two Premier League titles, the European International League, Club World Championship, Under-21 Championship, uh, the football European Football Championship, three Carabao Cups, two Community Shields. He is missing an FA Cup. He is missing the Champions League as well. But he's won so many individual accolades. Footballer of the Year eight times, or English Footballer of the Year eight times. European Championship, European Golden Shoe, Best player, Ballon d'Or. He's obviously going to win this constantly. He's won three Ballon d'Ors in a row, clearly ahead of Mbappe, Messi, Haaland, as he's the best player in the world. And that's just been absolutely confirmed. Three there as well. So it's no surprise that he is being already lauded as the greatest player of all time. Uh, I have no doubt that 47 goals in 44 games for England is definitely going to help. But that is it for the first part of this experiment. If you enjoyed this experiment, do drop a like down below. I'll do another part if you enjoy it. Uh, and drop a few likes down there. And next time we'll go 10 years ahead with Giancaldo Jr. And then we can maybe see how the rest of his career pans out in a third part as well. So let me know down below. If there's anything I've not shown you that you'd like to see, put it in the comments. And make sure to subscribe for that next part when it comes out probably tomorrow. But until next time, see ya.